We welcome you all for today's bear the class. You might have seen the banana plants, under the banana plants, there are so many small, small, small young plants, that young banana plants are arising at the base. So this is a simple example of the production. Every organism that produces their young one. This process is called reproduction. So reproduction is the biological process. Reproduction is the biological process of producing young ones. Or clothing. Yes, so the reproduction enables the continuity of species. That means it sustains the species generation to generation. So the reproduction is a very essential process in living organisms. So the, there are two types of reproduction. There are two types of reproduction, sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction in all living organisms. Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Now, I'm going to go Okay, asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction means the producing animals by the single parent. By the single parent. See, asexual reproduction is a form of reproduction in which an organism gives rise to genetical, identical individuals. The animals will be similar. The young ones will be similar and they are identical, similar or identical to their parents, to the parents, to their parents. Now the types of asexual reproduction, types of asexual reproduction. You can see number one, fission, fission, fragmentation, fragmentation, budding, budding, vegetative propagation, spore formation. So these five are different modes of asexual production in organisms. So first one is the fission. Fission. Fission is more common in unicellular organisms like amoeba. Okay. And if a body splits into two, then it is called binary fission. And if a body is divided into many, it is called multiple fission. It is called multiple fission. By the reason, a form of asexual reproduction by which the body splits into two bodies. Example, amoeba. Example, amoeba. You can see that the picture. The nucleus, then it divides into two, it elongates and two organisms are formed. Two organisms are formed. So a body, single body, divides and forms two cells. Single form divides two cells. So multiple fission, multiple fission, it is also a type of fission in which a single cell splits into many dark cells. The first one is the class of malaria. It is reproduced by this mode of reproduction. That is multiple fission. This is multiple fission. Then the next one is the fragment. Fragment, fragment means pieces. Fragment means pieces. The body, the mature organism, breaks into small, small pieces. And each Piece or fragment develops into a new organism, into a new organism. This is called as fragmentation, as the example of spiral by right one kind of algae, and it performs a sexual reproduction by fragmentation. Next, the next type is the regeneration. Regeneration means it is also a kind of asexual reproduction. It is also a kind of asexual reproduction. Here, the last part, from the last part, say, from the, in case of uh, wall lizard, if the tail is cut off, the tail can be formed. But in some organisms like planaria, if you cut it into many pieces, each piece will be generated into new organisms. Each piece will be generated into new organisms. That means if you will cut the planaria into 100 pieces, each piece will be developed into one organism. That is regeneration. Generation, reformation, reformation of the organism. Reformation of the organism. Vegetative 
propagation is common in plants. The plants, the reproductive part is the flower, and if other parts, other vegetative parts, from which it is replanted and arises, then it is known as vegetative propagation. Example, briovillum you can see here is the brio. This is the briovilla. This is the briovilla. From this notches, from the leaf margins, new plantlet arises. So here the vegetative part leaf, from the leaf new plantlet arises. And uh, this mode of vegetative reproduction or propagation is very common in case of briovilla. In case of briovilla. Vegetative parts like stem, leaf, growth. Yes. The vegetative pro propagation is, is also can be done by cutting. Can be done by cutting. That is artificial by artificial vegetative propagation by cutting and grafting. Cutting means say, for example, uh, banana banana stem one small piece cut and you can put in the soil and it will grow when the when it gets the moisture. Further that uh, jasmine, jasmine also can be propagated by the mode of layer, layer, just a part of the jasmine is buried under the soil and get to grow into the new plant. Okay. Yes. So this is the cutting and grafting. Grafting is very commonly, it is, it is practiced in agriculture. In agriculture. In agriculture. So in fungi, especially in the rice rovers, that is the uh, uh, bread mold. It is keep a uh, piece of bread for some days. Small mold will grow. And the rice over grows. And it produces spores. And spores grow into new organisms. See here, this is the rice over. And there is, uh, it is a uh, sporangium. Sporangium. Sporangium contains spores. It contains spores. And when the sporangium breaks, spores are released. When sporangium breaks, spores are released. And these spores grow into new reservoirs. Okay? So if this is a spore containing sac, sporangium. When it matures, it ruptures, it breaks. And releases the spores, spores grow into new organisms. That is a new reservoir. New result. Yes. Then next is sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Sexual reproduction. So here sexual reproduction is performed by the flower. Okay. Sexual reproduction by the flower. Yes, before going into the reproduction, we must know the parts of the flower. A flower, especially I have taken a China rose flower. Okay. It has the first part, the first part. In the flower, that is a, this one, sepal, 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 and it is a calyx, sepal and sepal combined, it forms calyx. Then petals are there, petals. These are petals. Yes, the petals. Together it is called the corona. Corona, corona, corona. The petals together collectively called the corona. Okay. And uh, this male um, male reproductive organs are collectively called androsium and uh, each one is called this one, each one is called stamen. You can see this one. You can take your man tenor flower and you can observe. These are these are Stamens and stamen consists of filament and and filament and and yes this is the male reproductive organ is stamen and you can see this one after removing the after removing the stamen you will find you will find that uh, this is a stigma here is a stigma here is a stigma here is a stigma Okay, here is the stigma and there is a style, this is a style and the style ends in ovary. So ovary, style, stigma, this is a female reproductive organ in a plant. This is a female reproductive organ in a plant. Yes, 
then uh, pollination take place pollination pollination means transfer of pollen in stigma this is the stigma this is the stigma in the here here pollen will fall this is the stigma in the stigma this pollen will fall the transfer of pollen to stigma is called pollination pollination and it is a two types it is a two types self pollination and cross pollination if the pollination takes place within a flower the same pollen falls within that stigma of the flower then it is called self pollination cross pollination is by some agents like water wind insects from what it is a, in a different in a different flowers of the same species okay the the pollen are carried by say for example by a butterfly and it attracts the pollen in another flower this is a cross pollination this is a cross pollination yes Yes, this is this is what I have just shown you that the flower parts. Uh, this is the uh, stigma. This is the style. Uh, this is the stigma. This is the style. And this is the anther. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, this is the anther. This is the petal. This is the pistil. Okay. See, see. This is this is the petal. This is the sepal. Sepal plus sepal calyx. And this is the petal. And the petal last in forms the corolla. Yes. And male reproductive organ is this, and the development of collective is the same. See this yellow part. This yellow part. Okay. Ah uh, yes. And female reproductive organ stigma, style, and the ovary. Ovary. This is the this part is the ovary. So these three parts are the female reproductive system. So this is a also a bisexual problem. If the flower if it is having both male and female reproductive organ, then the flower is said to be the flower is called bisexual flower. Now, once the pollination is over, the pollen reaches. Once the pollination is over, okay. Once the pollination is over, see this is the this is the female reproductive organ. That is the pistil. That is the pistil. Okay, and here the pollen falls, and the pollen. This is the pollen. Yes, this is the stigma. Okay, and this pollen develops a tube, develops a tube, like this, small tube. This way. This is called the pollen tube. This is pollen tube. Here there is a structure inside the inside the ovary. Trust me, it is called the nucleus sac. Nucleus sac. So here this and the the pollen produces two male gametes. The pollen contains two male gametes. So along with the along with the, the pollen tube, along with the pollen tube. Uh, one male gamete is a drop here, and the female is still in the air. And here the pollen nucleus. So X cell plus this X cell plus male gamete combines and it forms a zygote. And another male gamete from the pollen tube. It combines with this pollen nucleus and it forms endosperm. And it forms endosperm. So here, since there are fertilization, here fertilization occurs twice. Ah, uh, the, the fertilization occurs twice. It is called double fertilization. It is called a double fertilization. See, pollen tube grows along the side and reaches the embryo sac. See, pollen tube. One tube grows along this side and reaches the embryo sac. One male gamete of pollen reaches the egg cell. One pollen of male gamete reaches the egg cell and it forms cygote. Other male gamete reaches the polar nucleus. Polar nucleus here, along with polar nucleus, it combines and it forms endosperm. Okay, so the Embryo, the growth of the cygote results in the embryo. Cygote gives rise to embryo, 
and the endosperm provides nourishment. That means it provides food to the growing embryo and the seed becomes ovum. And fruit being uh, that the fruit wall that is uh, ultimately coming from the ovary. So this is the sexual reproduction in case of the plants. And you, are, uh, you can do the uh, this activity. You can just uh, take some uh, uh, rose plant uh, stem and you can just uh, plant in the soil. If you, you get some ice and it will grow. So you can directly you can observe the sexual reproduction. As well as video movement, you can observe. In this picture, anywhere. This is stigma, this is the style, and this is the ovary. Okay, this is the reproductive part of the female reproductive part of the flower. Yes. Now the pollen falls here, pollen falls on the stigma, on falling, it develops a pollen deal. It develops a pollen deal. Pollen deal you see it is growing along the style. It is growing along the style. And it reaches the younger side through microphile. Through microphile. And it drops one, one male nucleus, one male nucleus to the, one male nucleus to the, ah oh, yes, one male nucleus to the egg cell, here, here, uh, one male, uh, yes, one egg cell to the nucleus, and it, uh, that means one egg cell to the egg cell. One male family combines with the egg cell and it forms cycle. Okay, it forms cycle. This is a cycle. And another male family combines with the polar nuclei. Polar nuclei and it forms endosperm. Two polar nuclei plus this thing is a three end. It is a, it is a endosperm. So triploid endosperm is formed. In future, endosperm will be developing into Endosperm will be providing nourishment to the embryo and the embryo is developed from the cycle. Wolves in seed and ovary becomes a fruit wall. Fruit wall, okay. Yes. So you can practically observe asexual reproduction by observing biomilum and uh, roses, the jasmine, etc. Okay, in your garden, you can just observe how your biofilm is developing in the young one and this jasmine, uh, the stem of the ja jasmine, you can just uh, layer it and uh, a piece of sugarcane or rose plant, you can uh, you just, uh, if you put the berry into the soil, it will develop into a new plant. So, yes, practically you can see. Thank you all for this class. For a good class, thank you for that. Flowering plants undergo a unique reproductive process where there are two fertilization events. This double fertilization event occurs between the male reproductive organ, the male gametophyte, and the female reproductive organ, the female gametophyte. Before the fertilization event can occur, the ovule has to undergo some changes. At present, the ovule contains one reproductive cell, known as the megaspore or mother cell. This cell is diploid and undergoes meiosis, producing four haploid megaspores. In the majority of species, three of these megaspores degenerate, leaving only one surviving megaspore. This surviving megaspore expands and undergoes three rounds of mitosis to produce eight haploid nuclei. As the nuclei have not developed any individual division, they initially share the same cytoplasm. This complete structure is known as the embryo sac. Within the established embryo sac, cell walls begin to form between most of the nuclei. Three cells named antipodal cells form opposite the opening of the ovule, known as the micropyle. Another three cells form above the micropyle. 
Two of these are synergids, and the other is the egg cell. This leaves two nuclei in the center of the ovule. These central nuclei remain together in one large cell. It is the egg cell and this central nucleate cell which will eventually become part of the double fertilization event. In order for the double fertilization event to occur, the male gametes, the sperm, must travel from the anther to the embryo sac within the female reproductive organ. The pollen grain contains two main cells. A cell named the tube cell makes up the bulk of the pollen grain and the sperm cell, which at this stage is known as the generative cell. To reach the embryo sac, a pollen grain must land on the stigma. Once landed, it begins to germinate. The tube cell forms a long structure down the style and into the ovary. The generative cell travels behind the tube cell nucleus. Once near the ovary, it divides by mitosis to produce two haploid sperm cells. The pollen tube reaches the micropyle and releases the sperm cells into the embryo sac. One of the two sperm cells fertilizes the egg cell. This produces a diploid zygote, which will become the embryo. The other sperm cell moves up and fuses with both of the central nuclei, forming a triploid cell. This unusual triploid cell develops into an endosperm and serves as the embryo's food supply during early development. It is only angiosperms, flowering plants, which have this double fertilization characteristic, where a diploid zygote and a triploid endosperm form. Gymnosperms, pines, tracheophytes, ferns, and non-tracheophytes, mosses, lack this double fertilization feature.